My name is Jeff Ramsey. I work for Arizona Fire and Water Restoration. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. This video will help you understand the mitigation process. Hopefully it will put you and your family at ease in this stressful time. We're gonna give you guys a scenario that we have to see every day. You come home from work, you open up the front door and water gushes out. You take a step in, you see that your carpet's wet, there's standing water on your tile or wood floor, what do you do? The first thing I would recommend that you do is try to find where that water's coming from. Let's say it was the toilet supply line. The first thing you wanna do is shut the water off. You can shut it off at the angle stop or the main, either or. The next thing, call us. Give us a call, give the restoration company a call, get them out there, they'll let you know what the severity of the damage is. Once you got the mitigation services started, now it's time to let your insurance agent know what's going on. Whether it's the same day, it's the next day, give your agent a call, see if it makes sense to file an insurance claim. The restoration contractor can also let you know if it makes sense to file an insurance claim. So once our technicians set up their equipment so we can start the mitigation process, a lot of homeowners wonder, why are you setting up this type of equipment? Why do you have this machine in there? Why do you have to remove the baseboards? Why do you, are you removing drywall on this wall, but not this wall? They're all great questions. For drywall, if it's an exterior wall, on most houses, they have insulation in them. That insulation is like a sponge inside that hot contained cavity. So we need to open up the drywall so we can remove the wet insulation and dry out the framing and the sill plate. Some of the interior walls don't have insulation. So all we have to remove is baseboard because remember, we wanna get airflow on all the part of the wet walls. Let's take a look at the equipment and see why we use it and what is it for. This is our dehumidifier. Uh, with dehumidifiers, we use certain dehus for the size of the job. A bigger room, we'll use a bigger dehumidifier. A smaller room, we'll use a smaller dehumidifier. This is one of the most important pieces of equipment on a job when we're drying it out. It's gonna suck in the air and the moisture and then exhaust it with some heat. Really key component to the dry out. This is our desiccant dehumidifier. This is gonna be used for the hard to dry areas. Basements, something that you have to pump a lot of heat into. These are rare to use on jobs out in Arizona. Um, but once again, it's a dehumidifier. It's a key component to a dry out. This is a negative air machine, also called an air scrubber. We use these on major demolition jobs where we're removing a lot of drywall, a lot of flooring, when there's a lot of debris in the air. It has an intake, a pre-filter, a HEPA filter, then it exhausts out. These are needed for major demolition jobs, any mold remediations, asbestos abatements. Um, you'll probably see a lot more of them when we start doing more dry outs just for the dust factor. These fans also go underneath the cabinets. When you have cabinet and you have a loss that's in your kitchen, We'll take the bottom section of the kitchen, the, the toe kick of the cabinet out, and we'll place these underneath to get airflow. The point of a dry out and why we use these fans is to dry out the drywall. We want to get airflow on the drywall. We'll remove baseboard, toe kicks, wood paneling, anything and everything so we can get airflow on what we're trying to dry out. A thermal imaging camera, it allows us to see the temperature difference in the material. That allows us to see if something's wet or something's dry. What we'll do, it's a device that we'll shoot at what we think is wet. A lot of times the thermal imaging comes in big when it's a loss that came from above. Whether it's a roof leak, whether you're in a condo, an apartment, and you have a loss that happened upstairs and came down. The non-invasive moisture meter. This is a, a flat surface that we can put on any material. Drywall is usually what we put it on. We can put it on wood cabinets. There's different settings, but it doesn't damage the material we're testing. What we're looking for is the dry standard. What should that material be at when it's dry? Then we'll go to the affected area and see where it's at. Invasive meters. This has two prongs that will puncture through any of the materials that we're testing. Usually it's for wood. It's to see what the core or the center of that material is. Atmospheric readings. What this means is our technician will go out to the affected and non-affected areas in your house, use their moisture meter to find out the temperature and the relative humidity. 
Now what happens is the insurance is gonna allow us to dry out your house. Typically it's three to four days. Our guys will be going out every day once they start equipment. If more demolition, more drywall needs to be removed, then that's when they're gonna remove it. Each day they're gonna be taking moisture readings, they're gonna be looking for the relative humidity in the air, what the temperature is. Those two equations will give you the grains per pound. That's gonna tell us if we're drying it correctly. We'll first see high readings and they'll gradually go lower. We wanna have low humidity, high heat to have a successful dry out. After the extraction's done, we remove some of the wet pad, we took out some drywall because there was some insulation in there, some baseboards. We're then gonna come around and spray some antimicrobial. This is gonna help prevent any type of mold growth, bacteria. This is an optional thing to spray for the homeowners. You don't have to have antimicrobial. I personally recommend it. We don't know what that water touched. If you can imagine stepping on your floors with your shoes and what you've stepped on throughout the day, that's why we spray an antimicrobial. So once all the demolition is complete, all the drywall that needs to be removed is removed, they're still gonna go around and make sure every wall that's wet or not wet is marked. If it's wet, we gotta make sure we have equipment on it. We wanna see the defined line between affected and non-affected. Day three, the technician's gonna get out there. He's gonna do his moisture reading and atmospheric readings as well. So day one and day three, what's the difference between the moisture readings? Day one, you're gonna see really high humidity. You're gonna see probably low temperature. What we wanna have by day three is low humidity and higher temperature. By day three, day four, things should start to be drying where it's, we can pull the equipment. If day three, the moisture's still wet, we're still at 99% or 50% and it's day three, we're gonna remove that material. If it's drywall, we're gonna remove it and see what's preventing it to dry out. There could be a numerous things. There could be foil backing. You could have insulation inside of an interior wall. Something could be happening that's preventing it from drying out successfully. Anything that's still wet on day three or day four, it gets removed. If it's dry, we would pull the equipment. Hopefully by day four, day five, the equipment's gone. The equipment's picked up, it's in the truck. The last step is making the customer feel comfortable that it is dry. We'll take them around their whole house, show them all the affected areas again, letting them know that this is dry. We'll put the meters back out on the wall, showing them so they can visually see that it's dry. What happens next is the mitigation's complete. Typically the contractor will then write the estimate for the mitigation and then submit it to your insurance company. Now all insurance companies are different, so you have to call and talk to your adjuster or just work with the restoration contractor. They should know how the process goes. Once the mitigation's done, they write their mitigation estimate. Then the adjuster will come back out. The contractor that you're gonna have do the repairs will come out as well. They will then write a repair estimate. They'll wanna get your house back to pre-loss condition. So this is a really valuable meeting for the adjuster, the contractor, and yourself to be at the same house so everyone's on the same page to start with. Okay, here's some just important facts to remember. Types of water losses. In our industry, there's different types of water losses. There's clean water losses, there's gray, there's black. There's a clean water source, which is gonna be your water supply line. There'll be gray where it has some contaminants in it, but not, not enough to make you sick. Those are considered gray. Then there's black, sewer backup, outside water coming in, those are category three, those are black water losses. A category three water is gonna have the highest level of contaminants. That source is usually gonna come from a sewer backup, a toilet backup, a sink backup, or outside water coming in. When those losses happen, they're larger losses. We have to remove that material that was affected, whether it's carpet, pad, drywall, wood flooring, cabinetry, there's three really major different sources. How are we gonna come up with your pricing? And is insurance gonna cover it? It's a great question. Our pricing, we use Xactimate pricing. Most insurance restoration contractors use Xactimate pricing. The way we bill is after the mitigation's done. We don't know if it's gonna be a two-day dry out or a four-day dry out. So after the mitigation's complete, we will then write the estimate through Xactimate, send it to the insurance company. 
The insurance company also uses this pricing, so it makes it really easy to come to an agreement for the estimate. I would recommend filing a claim when you have a great amount over your deductible. If you have a thousand dollar deductible and a restoration contractor says it's going to be fifteen hundred dollars, I probably wouldn't file a claim. If the contractor says it's going to be around thirty-five hundred dollars and you have a thousand dollar deductible, that's when I would file a claim. Also, when filing a claim, it depends on where the source came from. If it's a sewer backup, you want to make sure you have sewer backup coverage before you file a claim. If it's a roof leak, you want to make sure that you have roof damage and that's going to be covered by insurance before you have a company start. You want to make sure on questionable losses that it has a better chance of being covered before you file a claim. That being said, having a restoration company like ourselves go out before you file a claim, we will give you an opportunity to know what's damaged, is it a questionable loss, should it be covered before you actually file a claim. Remember, time is of the essence. Every day, every 24 hours, the walls are getting worse. Your wood flooring is getting worse. Your cabinets are getting worse. Starting the mitigation is gonna be able to save a lot of that material. So starting mitigation, you wanna do that first. What we'll do for you is we'll take the time, we'll walk the job with you. We'll look at all your furniture. We're gonna to wanna to look at the feet. What's wood? Is it swollen? Is anything's rusted? On your carpet, if you have wood furniture, the stain will rub off and transfer to the carpet, staining it. Those are things that we need to know because we'll take pictures, proper documentation, and send it to your insurance company. The biggest thing you wanna do with your furniture, make a non-salvage list. If there's items that are ruined, if electronics are wet, damaged, boxes are damaged, look inside the boxes. We wanna minimize the damaged contents at your property. If it's a whole house flood, what we'll end up doing is taking most of your contents and putting it in a storage container. Sometimes we can get a storage container drop off at your house and stay there, or we get it transferred to another facility. At our company, we have storage bolts that we can store in our facility, so it's temperature controlled, it's safe, it's secure. So here's an overview of the whole mitigation process. Day one, you found the water loss. You called the restoration company out, and you filed an insurance claim. Also day one, we're gonna start the emergency services. Day two, we'll complete the demolition and all the drywall or material removal. Day three, four, and five, it's gonna be finishing up the dry out, making sure everything's dry. At the end, all the equipment's out. We'll be writing the estimate, submitting it to your insurance. Now you're ready for the repairs. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding on how the mitigation process works. If you have questions, please give us a call. Once again, I'm Jeff Ramsey. I work for Arizona Fire and Water Restoration. Thank you.